Welcome to a demonstration of BuildSoft's BT2 package for wall and ceiling takeoff. We'll start at the Job Manager screen. At this screen you can create projects and jobs. For example, a project might be the name of a client or type of work that you're doing. For example, a builder name. And then within that project you can have jobs. And the job could be a street address or a client name. You can see here we have a builder's name and if we open that up we then have the jobs within that project. If I double click on a job that will open the estimate and you'll see it's split into two screens. We're on the left we can put in our estimate information and on the right here is where we can insert plans whether they be PDF or CAD files. So we'll start on the left where we can insert some headings and items. We might start with say ceilings as a heading, I can nominate that it's a heading by clicking on this button here. We then might have a sub heading, say ground floor heading. You can see that indents as a subheading, and then we might have an item. In here in this result type column, you can select whether you want an area calculation, a length, a volume, a vertical area, or a count item or just to make an item a note. You can just type quantity straight into the cells and the software will just multiply across quantity by rate to give you a total but the idea is to calculate the quantities from the plans and to do that we click the insert button on the right hand side here that will bring up our browser where you can load in files such as PDF DWG or DXF, your CAD files, but it'll also import these other file types as well. I'll go to my downloads folder and I'll find a plan that I wish to load. Click open. I can then select the plan from a list and click import. That'll then load that plan up in the viewport. What we can do with this software is if you're running two monitors or multiple screens, you can actually split it over two screens where you could have your estimate on the left side and if I right clicked here on the viewport and went float, I could float this plan across to a second screen so then we could maximize it to see you know, a lot more on the screen of what we're taking off from. If I right click and I'll just dock it back in for this demonstration, you can see with this plan it's come in upside down so we do have some options where we can rotate the plan 90 degree at a time to get it into a view uh, that we're comfortable with using. Now before we can take off any quantities from it what we need to do is give it a dimension. So I'll zoom in here where so there's a long dimension like this 7.2 meter wall here or dimension here. So what we can do, we tell it that we want to scale off from either horizontal or vertical line. And there's a couple other options as well, but in this case I'll just click, left click here. Oops, sorry, I'll need to turn the zoom off first. Left click here, left click at the end, and then insert the dimension. So in this case 7270, click OK, and that calibrates the plan on the screen. So what I can now do, if I zoom in on the plan again, if I wanted to calculate, say, the ceiling area, I'd highlight my item. But I'll also show you that you can create multiple items, let's say corners, and I'll make that, in this case, a length item. And I might just indent that underneath ceiling area there. And I'll show you that you can either highlight one item, plot a shape, or you can tag multiple items by holding the control key down and tagging them. And if I come in here on the plan, it might be too accurate, but you can zoom in. And before I plot, note that up here you can select which color you wish to plot with, whether you want the shape to be just an outline or transparent with a shading or solid with a shade color. But if I just go around, say, the internal area of this wall, Go into these little coves if need be. If you make a mistake, it's quite user friendly. You can just undo and redo if you need to. 
And when I get back to the original point, I can either click on the original point or I can do a right click. It tells the software to join back to the original point. And if we have a look here, it's been able to give us A, the flat area of the ceiling, and B, the perimeter of the shape. Right, so one shape can be assigned to multiple items. And if you have a look in the bottom here, it also has what we call a calc sheet. So shape one area, that could be for a ground floor, if that's what it was. We could also have a first floor calculation inserted here as well, where you can manually type it in. You can see by just punching in lengths and widths, it'll, you're allowed to do manual calculations. Or, if I zoom out on the viewport, say so zoom in on a another area let's say I might zoom in on let's say we wanted to add this area to this item we can do that also I could select say a different color that we might want to plot with and then by my cursor being on this item if I now create another shape so I'm just left clicking all the way around back to the original point, you'll see that this item now has multiple quantities or multiple dimensions being calculated to build up to the total area of 294. So this shape 2 area could be called first floor then, for example. You can also do deductions if there is a void. That can be done manually if you want to. Let's say there was an area 2 meters by 5 meters. There might be two of those areas. We can say let's deduct that out of the total. So instead of 294, it's now 274 square meters. You can nominate that you want the quantities to be rounded up to the next whole unit. So a few options there in this calc sheet. If I now moved on to say something like walls as a heading, and we might go internal walls. This time I'll select vertical area. You can select vertical area less openings as well if you wanted to take out the doors. I'll zoom out and zoom back in over here. Now let's say uh, we want to take off the internal walls now. There's a really handy option here where we can turn off, say, the ceiling by clicking on this eye symbol. So it turns the shape on and off on the plan just to make it a little bit easier to look at. And then with the internal walls, I might actually make that a subheading and then underneath we might create say something like 13 mil plasterboard to both sides of wall. Now what I can do before I plot the shapes this time, I can actually give it names as I go. So you might want to give them room names. Let's say start with bed 2. We've got an option here for factor. So if you wanted to take off, say, both sides of the wall, you could put in a factor of 2. You have a default height that you can set up. In this case, it's 2700, but you can change away from the default height. And then if I was to now plot the wall, let's say, bed 2, here to here. When I'm finished, I do a right click. Because I'm in vertical area mode, it means the shape doesn't have to be closed. So when I right click, it's just like telling the software well, the wall's finished there. So it's been able to tell me that, well, bed 2, internal wall 17 square metres, but a factor of 2 for both sides, 34 square metres. So if I continued on with a couple of the other walls, let's say living, adjust the height if you need to. I'll also show you in a moment that you can adjust the wall heights after you've plotted them as well. So we've now got living. If you can see here, it's added that to the bottom window. We'll do one more. Let's say bed one. I'll just come down to say here. Right click. In this case, we might, with this particular wall, we only might want plasterboard on one side of the wall. So what we could do is say, well, in this case, we just want a factor of one. And it could be bed one as well. Plot that. Actually I might put that in a different colour to denote that that's got a wet area on the other side of it. I'll come through the doorway 
right click so you can see now that that shape's gone in with just a factor of one. And whichever line that you highlight in the calc sheet, it'll actually highlight the wall on the plan where it gets that quantity from. Okay, that's all in a 2D view and you can see we've got a total 90.98 square meters there. I'll round that up. I can also click up here view and go to a 3D view where it shows me these walls in a 3D view now. And they're transparent there so we can see through them but if you wanted to make them a solid wall we can do that also. You just hit this select button and say okay for that wall I've got selected make it solid. So I could repeat that for the other walls as well if need be. So I've made them all solid there now. If we wanted to drop an opening on and have that come out as a deduction I could say let's go vertical area less openings under home there's an option up here for openings library where you can build up a list of all your window and door sizes and tell it whether they're relevant for this job or not if I select up here on this drop down list it's got three default door sizes let's say that we want to use I can select one and I can zoom in and say well that 820 door needs to go there and you see if I look down in the calc sheet it's actually automatically dropped in that there's a deduction there for that door and it's taken out the 1.673 square meters which has made the quantity now 90 and if we look back in this 3D view now you can see that that door is in the 3D view there also Anything that's in this uh, viewport, you can print out at any stage if you want to. Uh, there's a, a number of reports. I'll quickly show you. Here there's a shape report. which So whatever view you have in the viewport, when you print, it'll print that view. And it'll have a list of the shapes and their quantities, their factors underneath. The build soft report, you can dump to Excel, PDF, or a Word document. You can add your logo to the report as well. And if I come back out, back to this item, with the rates, you can either type in rates like I did earlier. So the software will go 90 square meters by 65 to give us a budget for that item. You can see now we have a budget for walls and a budget for ceilings and an overall budget for the job at the bottom. But what you can also do, if you put your cursor in the rate column, You'll notice there's a rate sheet down here. So when your cursor's in the quantity column, it'll show you a calculation sheet where all your, say, shape dimensions are to calculate an overall quantity for that item. But when you toggle to the rate sheet, it gives you access to what we call a composite rate sheet. So in here is where you can build up what it's going to cost to supply and install one square meter of this particular product type. So down here we might have supply, one square meter might be X amount of dollars. You might have labor to place. And the idea is to have these composite rates built up in a template job so they're available to you each time you create a new job. You might work out that it's say 0.25 of a, a bucket, let's say, per square meter at whatever the price is per bucket. So you can see I'm building up a, a composite rate delivery of items might be you might want to allow three dollars per square meter to get everything to site so we're building up a composite rate so at the moment we're saying well it's sixty four dollars eighty eight per square meter of plasterboard to supply and fix uh, you can also with the labor you can work out you know how long it takes to say supply and install the one square meter you might say that it's 0.15 of an hour at let's say forty dollars an hour so you can build up composite rates that way as well which is now updated this rate you've got room for markups if you then want to add your markup to it which then updates obviously the total and the overall total for the job if we then go to the trade report you can print this out as it, what we call a trade breakup, where in this case it shows you your markup, your rate, your overall total. 
if you wanted to give this to the client, you can come down here and say markup supplied, which will then factor in that markup into your rates. So now the rates are inclusive of your markup and therefore it's hidden in the contract amount. You can also say print it without any rates at all. So just quantities, which could be handy for say people on site. You can also print a, a heading summary report, which just says, well, ceilings is X amount of dollars, walls is X amount. And remember, as I've said before, you can dump these out to Excel, PDF, or Word. You can also export this information straight out to an Excel spreadsheet. So to do that, we just click on this Excel button, and you'll see it just drops it out into a spreadsheet where you can customize it to suit, or you could save this as a file to import into an accounting package as a budget or into a job administration type system. Formulas go with it. So if you wanted to come in here and say, well, let's just allow 95 square meters there, it'll update the total and therefore the overall total because there is formulas built into this spreadsheet. You can load in multiple plans along here. So if there was another plan we needed to load, we could just click insert we could then browse to where we've got some plans. So I'll go to my C drive where I've got some PDF files. I'll select another page, click open, import that plan in. Because this is a new plan that we're importing, we need to once again give it a scale or just a dimension to scale off from. So I'll just quickly say, well, from here to here is 10 and a half meters. Okay, and I'll show you now that one item can have quantities coming from multiple plants. So if I move on to this plan, let's say we want to do plasterboard to both sides of this wall coming down the middle here. I can go back to my polyline mode, which tells it I want to create a shape. Give the shape a name. Let's say factor two both sides. Might be a 2700 meter wall. And I can say from here to here. And then you see here we've got like a curve. So you can just go click, click, click. But the really neat tool in the software is that if there's a curved wall, you can click at the end of the wall, hold your mouse key down, and bend the line left or right. And let the cursor go. So once again, click, hold down, bend back along the line to create a curved wall. So if I right click now, we can see that you know, that wall is 98 square meters multiplied by two for both sides of the wall. So it's 197 square meters, which has been added to the overall total for this item. If I go to the 3D view, I'll show you that you can also create raking walls. I'll just zoom in a bit here. If I click on the shape in the calc sheet, you'll see on the right here, it gives me each individual wall or line dimension and what the areas are. If, say, arc 3 was a raking wall there, you can see we've got point 0.1 and point 0.2. Let's say it raked up to 5 metres at the point 0.2 end. I can insert that 5 metres and you can see there now it's created that rake. Just rotate a bit so you can see that a bit better which has updated this area, and now our quantity for that item is 306 square meters. So that gives a basic idea of how you can take off areas, lengths, and vertical areas. As mentioned, you can also count up items as well, and you can take off volumes, excavation, and also uh, you can take off raked ceilings and raked hips and rafters, for example. Thank you for listening.